Okay, so today we're going to talk about edge banding and how to set that up in Mosaic. Um, Mosaic does have a bit of a tedious setup for edge banding, but we're going to go through all that today. Um, it does take a bit of time to set up, but it's also, once it's set up, you don't really have to think about it again unless you want to make all of your edge banding come out exactly the right material name, which in, it does have it, its advantages for production for when you're running labels and stuff like that. But I mean, you can set it it's the way we've done it, which is much, much easier. Um, so the first thing you want to do is you have to set up the actual edge banding material. So that's under libraries and materials. So open up your material library. You can see you have panel stock. So that's your board material, board stock. So that's your lumber and edge banding. So this is where you want to set up your edge banding. Um, you want to make sure you have a proper thickness here, unless you have an edge bander with a pre-mill that will reduce your material accordingly. Uh, you have to set it properly here. Otherwise it will, Mosaic will automatically reduce the material to make sure that it's allowing, you know, for a half mil or 0 0.8 uh, 0.018 thickness of edge banding. So you're going to want to make sure you set that up here. If it's pre-mill, you just set all, if you have an edge banner with pre-mill, you just set all these at zero thickness and the machine will take, obviously take it off and then put it back on again. So that's, that's how you set that up. So basically in, you go to your material library, you set up your material here, your name, the width, the length of the roll, the cost of the roll will run to your pricing te template, uh, then your markup, your add-on, and then how much waste you usually get. Uh, you can also set it as a strip, so if you're running hardwood or something, edging, then you can set that up here. Um, pretty good setup for that. It's pretty straightforward. I'm not going to go too deep into this menu. So just set up your material templates. We're going to use probably the top four. I'll show you what my template is. Instead of, you, you could spend a lot of time making sure that, you know, every time you send out K15 canes, it will say K15 canes on the edge banding. It's just really tedious to follow up on. Whereas if you train your people to, uh, you know, run a gable and this part is the interior color and then this edge banding part is this color, or the finished material color, there's other ways around it. And then you don't have to go through all this every time. You can just set it up once. So set up your material in your material templates. The next thing you need to do is go to material or set up your materials in your material menu. Then you got to go material templates. Then you got to go to banding. So Mosaic breaks it up in four different types of banding. Uh, what we do is the one that I use the most is this one, 0 0.5 millimeter finished wood. Uh, so you set up your uh, edge banding for, we have a, a recess on some of our drawers we like to have. So uh, we'll drop in a three millimeter front back thickness there um, because we don't use the fourth one hardly ever. So it was a good way to reduce our drawer fronts and backs. There's other ways to do that, but that's how we had set it up. Uh, here we have uh, edge banding 0.5 millimeter PVC. We have our 0.5 millimeter custom color. So we'll bring in a PVC color that matches the stain. And then we have three, which is the wood veneer to match that goes to the finished parts. So that's the most common one, or you can run it all as like, uh, all as white. This will make sense in the next menu. So I'll come back to it to show you again. So that, then that's set up and then you go to edge band assignments. So here is where you pick the parts. So each part has its own banding assignment. You can select the part, let's start with, uh, let's say a finished end. Let me see here, finished end. So you also have base and wall. So 
So we'll, we'll start with an unfinished end. So click, if you click the actual numbers here, which is the indication of where you're edging, it will open up this menu, which is similar to the shape editor and all that, but basically all you're doing is deciding which edge you want to band. So these numbers, right, one, two, three, and four coincide with the edge banding uh, material template numbers. So here we have banding number two because this is a unfinished end, so it's just going to run it as uh, the PVC custom color. So it's just as close as the stained color as we can get. We'll run this number two. If I go to the finished end one, it's running number three, which was the veneer. So, you know, a finished part, be it an add-on panel or something that needs to go to the booth to be finished, will be, we'll select number three. So then if you go down to something like a door, edged all the way around, and so on. So basically you're just setting up your materials. The other number is number one, which for drawer parts and stuff, you have number one because you just want the interior color. Also, if you go to a wall, the wall cabinets, we've set it up so that the top and the bottom of the wall uppers are edged the interior color of the cabinet because we don't want to have lines underneath when we're installing. So I'll go back to this menu, uh, material templates. So again, these numbers here, one, two, is it zero? Well, this is technically one, zero, two, three, four. These numbers coincide with those in edge band assignments. Now, to make your pro, your uh, actual job read that, so we've just set it up. We haven't actually, nothing's reading anything at this point. You have to go to your library or your parameters, I mean. So that be either your job parameters or your global parameters in your library uh, or even in the cabinet. You can select different ones. So let's do, let's do it in the job. So if we're going to go to other, and this is where you select your edge band assignments. So these are all the ones that we've set up in that menu. And again, this isn't, I don't know if it's the most efficient setup, but that's kind of why we decided just to go with the single setup so that it's not so tedious because it's really, really tedious to go through it and get all the freaking settings set up it's, it's just really tedious. So set this up here. This is your edge band assignment. We have our default one. Oops. So let's go to back to here. We have our HC default. This is the one we use per standard. And then we go to another way. Another thing too is if you want to change the banding on it on an actual cabinet, you go to the cabinet, you go to, there's a couple ways, you can go here and you can change it there in your parameters. The other way is if you go to parts and you select, say I want this shelf and I go edit banding. Now I'm pulled up with this menu and I want to change that back and this side to be two. So this, this shows up on the stickers if you've set it up to show it on the stickers. So this is the most convenient part is that when you set up this banding and you have it set up right, when the people are edge banding it, I'll just show you, uh, okay, let's just run to the optimizer. Oops, the gen, the labor, uh, lumber's not going to have anything. Let's go to this. Yeah, that's fine. Just waiting for the optimizer to open up. So you optimize this, you go to your labels tab, and I want to view the label. My drawer bottoms have no edge banding, so it's not go showing you any labels here. But if you go here, these little tabs here, that indicates the edging side. So you can see I'm, I'm 
it to be this label, it's requiring A1 to edge on this side. And when you're when you're <clears throat> excuse me when you're running it on the CNC, as you can see, this is the sheet that it's going to run as. If you stick the label on in this orientation, it's always pointing it to the right side, which we find really nice. It's a lot makes things a lot simpler for everyone to edge band. So. I think that's about it for edge banding. Um, the other thing you could do is have different templates. You do also have to go here and make sure you've selected this edge banding template here. Because basically the template tells the program what color to make it. The assignment, which is ran by the parameters, tells it where on each part to edge band it. So it's kind of like two different settings linked in two different ways so make sure you have that set correctly so we'll go through this just one more time just because I know it's so confusing so materials you set up your edge banding okay this is the color and the thickness that is linked to the banding template okay so this sets your color for each numbered thing here. Your job will have to pick the proper color template right here and it will also be neat, uh, it will also have to call up this parameter as the right edge banding assignment. So now you you've got the right color You've got the, an edge banding assignment. You have to make sure that you're under edge banding assignments. This is set up properly for each part, and then you're good to go. Uh, that's about it for this, uh, this video. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.